Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellum's Grinny Flix Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Yes, it's going to be around the Leica M series cameras and a new lens that Leica brought out earlier this year which was a 35mm f2 Summicron Apo. It must be one of the best lenses ever made. One of the key features of this lens is that it actually focuses down to right down to 0.3 meters, which is unique because uh, most rangefinder camera lenses only focus down to 0.7 to match up with the rangefinder mechanism that's in the camera. But did Leica get it right doing a 35mm lens that would focus down to 0.3 meters? Or should it have been a 50mm Apple Summicron F2 that focuses down to 0.3 or 0.4 0.5 meters? That's the question. Leica actually did do this in an earlier lens. Let's check it out. Most Leica lenses only focus down 0.7 meters, and that's to do with the whole design of the uh, rangefinder and its mechanism here, and hence the 0.7 meters focus, so that you can focus manually through the optical viewfinder. There's infinity and then as you rotate it gets to 0.7 and there's a bit more resistance and then it focuses all the way down to 0.3 meters. Should it have been a 50 millimeter apo that focuses down to 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5 meters? What do you think? Leica had done this and here it is here. It's the Leica F2 Simicron 50 millimeter lights Wetzler lens. Now what's unusual about this lens is that it did come with a, some goggles that would actually fit as well and uh, when you mount the goggles then you can actually focus right down to 0.5 meters. I don't have any goggles fitted on here and also you have to pull this focus ring out to get past that little point there then that locks in but you still can't turn it so you have to press that little button and then you can turn it and it will focus all the way down to 0.5, so about 0.5 meters. And then when you focus back and you keep on rotating, you get to 0.9 meters there, and that's where you have to lift that focus ring again. And then it goes past that, and then you can focus normally right up to infinity again. All right, that's the operation. So it's not the most ergonomic if you don't have the goggles fitted. But for the sake of the exercise, I'll take this out, take some photographs. It is an older lens, so I'm expecting some fogging that's inside the lens that might create some flare. And we'll take it onto the street around Sydney Harbour, take some photographs, both, uh, you know, test out the lens as it is, as well as close, closer focus around the 0.5 metres.
Right, well, back in the studio. Before I go into the shots, there's some practical aspects that we have to talk about with the lens, and that's to do with the actual lens mechanism here. This is, you can just probably see that it does protrude out a little bit more. If I take my Sumalux lens here, the lens does rise and fall inside there, and that interferes or that interacts with the rangefinder lever inside the camera. But with the dual focus lens here, it's got this extra half collar here. Now that's good news and bad news. If we look at the old um, rangefinder camera, if you look at the old film camera, you can see we've got a nice clear space inside the cavity there, and then the little mechanism there which adjusts the range focus and interacts with the lens. If you look at, uh, other than the M11, if you look at some of the other digital M cameras, you've got a little light meter down the bottom here, so you've got a bit of an assembly down there. And if you look at the uh, M11, that's all disappeared because when you take the shot, the shutter opens up and you're basically reading straight off the sensor. So the old 50mm Summicron works fine with the M11. However, if you put it on an older digital M camera, you have to make sure that it's not on infinity and go somewhere, you know, say three meters or something as far as the focus is concerned. Then you can line it up and you can put it on there, which is fine. You can go close focus as operating before and you can focus right down to 0.45 or whatever, 0.5 meters. However, if you want to go to infinity, you can't because the actual, that half shell, that half collar there on the inside of the lens interferes with the, I'm pretty sure, interferes with the light meter assembly down the bottom there, which means the maximum focus distance you can actually go to is about 10 meters. You can't get to infinity. So you can't put this lens on M10, M9, M240, M, M Type 240, and previous digital Leica M's. You can put it on any film camera, M film camera or the M11. All right, that's an important observation. The design of the 35 millimeter APO close focus lens, which focuses down to 0.3 meters, has a complete different mechanism for focusing and interacting with the little lever within the rangefinder. As I focus from infinity, there's a little plunger there that goes in and out. So there's nothing rotating, there's no collar or anything like that, and that's the reason why the 35mm APO will work on any M camera, like a camera, whether it be any digital and any film camera. I noticed that there was some fogging in the lens, and you'll see it in the photographs, um, particularly where there are bright lights within the photographs, you'll notice this haze around the photograph, and also some general haziness across the entire photograph and that's yes you can sort of compensate for that in Lightroom in post-processing but it's there. That's something to look out for when you're actually buying older lenses depending on where it's stored and uh, the humidity levels etc. There may be some haze or some fog within the lens and it will show up in your photographs particularly in strong lights. But otherwise it was uh, quite a you know, it was similar to similar as far as its function was concerned. It was similar in use to the 35 millimeter Apple. 35 millimeter Apple is much easier to use, being a modern lens, and uh, the fact that you can just focus infinity down to 0.7 meters, and then you just rotate past it to 0.35 meters. But what I did find was that at 0.3 meters, you'd get a similar shot at 35 millimeter to that of 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meter at 50 millimeter. So as far as the macro type function, you end up being about the same ratio in those close-up shots. So in that sense, both lenses are similar as far as their close-up function is concerned. But then when you, when you go away from the subject, then you're obviously back to a 35 millimeter format versus 50 millimeter format, and it's much more obvious which one you're shooting with. Both the 35 and the 50 millimeter focal lengths are my favorite. Depending on the situation, I might grab a 50, and other times I actually 
grab the 35. The 15 millimeter will give you much larger bokeh balls in the background, particularly uh, in the soft focus, and uh, will give you also a narrower depth of field for the same aperture. I enjoyed the day shooting out in the harbour. I had some really interesting lighting. I hope you like the photographs. I will be talking a bit more about this lens in another video that's coming up around fog in old lenses and what to look out for. Yeah, it's a similar size and similar weight to the 35mm Apple. If the fog wasn't in the lens, I'd be much happier with the results. Uh, it is a bit awkward without the goggles. If the goggles were there, then you wouldn't have to be pressing that button. You still have to pull the lens, uh, the focus ring out to change your range, but you don't have to press the button to move it to that close focus. Having the silver and the black, I think, it, it adds some character to the whole experience, the aesthetics of uh, the experience. Okay, going back to my original question, did, uh, did Leica make the right choice in doing a 35mm dual focus range, close focus range lens, rather than the 50mm Apple? Only time will tell. The 35mm focal length is one of my favourite and therefore this is the right combination for me. If I had this lens that was in good condition, or, or I mean, I did borrow the lens, but if uh, if I found one that had, didn't have any fog in it, would I use it? Probably not, because you still need the goggles. If uh, like I brought out the 50 millimeter Apple dual range version, well then that's a serious contender, isn't it? Anyway, something to think about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then give it a thumbs up. That's how you support the channel, it helps me bring more content to you. If it's the first time to my channel, then do subscribe, press notifications, you'll be notified when the next video is out. There is a thing called super thanks, or thanks in, in YouTube, and that's how you can actually add or contribute to um, the channel as well, and that also helps produce more content for you guys. Thanks again for watching. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, cheers, bye. Most like lenses only focus down 0.7 meters, and that's to do with the whole design of the uh, rangefinder and its mechanism here and hence the 0.7 meters focus so that you can focus manually through the optical viewfinder there's infinity and then as you rotate it gets to 0.7 and there's a bit more resistance and then it focuses all the way down to 0.3 meters should it have been a 50 millimeter apo that focuses down to 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5 meters what do you think like a had done this on a 50 millimeter lens and here it is here it's the Leica f2 simicron 50 millimeter lights Wetzler lens now what's unusual about this lens is that it did come with a, some goggles that would actually fit as well and uh, when you mount the goggles then you can actually focus right down to 0.5 meters i don't have any goggles fitted on here and also you have to pull this focus ring out to get past that little point there then that locks in but you still can't turn it so you have to press that little button and then you can turn it and it will focus all the way down to 0.5 so about 0.5 meters and then when you focus back and you keep on rotating you get to 0.9 meters there and that's where you have to lift that focus ring again and then it goes past that and then you can focus normally right up to infinity again all right that's the operation so it's not the most ergonomic if you don't have the goggles fitted but for the sake of the exercise I'll take this out take some photographs it is an older lens so I'm expecting some fogging that's inside the lens that might create some flare but let's see uh, what sort of shots I can get